Hello everyone and welcome to another Vector Twist tutorial. Today I'm going to show you how to create a vector dice with rounded corners and rounded edges. So let's get right to it. I'm going to be creating a blue dice. Pick whatever color you want. So first I'm going to pick one of my colors for the fill and then I'm going to choose the rectangle tool. Then I'm going to create a square on the artboard and set the values to probably around 225 pixels and click OK. Now we're going to be creating copies of this. We need three sides, so one on the right and then one on the left. Now we're going to be turning this into an isometric cube. I'm going to be working with my isometric action set. If you don't have one, please go and watch the video I made on how to create your own isometric action set, the SSR method, so you can create your own isometric actions the link to the tutorial is in the description. So first the middle one we're going to set for isometric top. So I'll click my actions and hit play. Then of course for the right side it's going to be isometric right and then the left isometric left. And then we're going to create another copy. So select it and then move it a copy onto the left. We're going to be uniting this. This is going to be the backdrop for our dice. I'm not going to use the Pathfinder. In this case, I'm going to use the Shape Builder tool. So choose it from the toolbar and then just drag over all of the sides that you want to unite. Once that's done, we have to switch to the Direct Selection tool and just pay attention that you have all of the corner widgets in the corners for the anchor points. If you have one missing, you probably didn't align it properly and you have extra points in the corner. So just with the Pen tool, remove those. So pull the corner widget let's say to probably around 60 pixels, and then we're also going to give it the lightest color. Then we can color the cube. Now we have to align them with the align tool, so just grab the cube sides, group them, and then select the rounded corner shape, and then align them horizontally and vertically. Next, we have to move the shape to the back. So on the object, go to Arrange and Send to Back, but don't deselect it. We need to create a copy on top of everything. This is going to be our clipping mask. So create a copy and then paste it in front, and then of course, bring to front. Now we're going to select all of the shapes and then apply a clipping mask. And now we have the starting point for our dice. Of course, we only have rounded corners now. We need to also round out the edges. And in this case, we're going to be using the effect stylize round corners. Now we need to actually go into our clipping mask, so double click, and then we're going to select our cube shape. It's okay if it's still grouped. Then go back to effect, stylize, and then choose round corners. The reason for the round corner effect instead of the corner widgets is that we're working in the isometric perspective. And if we just pull each corner, it won't apply the proper perspective, but the effect round corners will. Set a radius of 28, maybe even one higher, and then press OK. Now don't deselect anything. We need to shrink the sides down. In this case, what we're going to do is go to Object, Transform, and then you're going to choose Transform Each. Now in the pop-up, I already set a percentage. I think to shrink it down to 95% for horizontal and vertical, and then you can press OK. Now with the Direct Selection tool, I can just move my shapes into place. Now I exit my clipping mask, and here we have our dice. All we have to do now is add some circles for the numbers, and then that's it. If you want to have it a little bit more rounded, you can select the shapes again, go back to Appearance panel and double click Rounded Corners, and then increase the radius slightly. And then at the same time, I think I want to adjust the outside, so I want to adjust the clipping mask. So let's just click it, press and hold the Option key, click one more time on an anchor point, it selects all of the clipping mask, and then tighten up the corners. And now we're just going to add our numbers. So for the fill, a white, I'm going to create a circle and the top's going to be number 5. Again, I'm using my actions, so isometric top. I'm going to be creating 4 more copies, place them into the corners, and then we can move on to the other side. Here we need 6. I'm going to create a copy of my circle. I want to keep the same size, but I have to undo the isometric top. So in my actions, I'm going to undo it, and then give it the isometric right action. And there I'm going to place the number 6, so 3 copies on top. Select them all and then another copy on the bottom. And then we just need to create a copy. I'm going to reflect it to the other side and then place them into their position. You can make then copies out of it, rotate the view, move them up, change the colors, and so on. I think you get the idea. And this is it. 